Who wants to jump in tech? Let's let, let's start. Let's lead off with you, brother. Hey man, you're talking about um, you're talking about the cannabis, man. I gotta support you, man. <laughs> hey, sativa is my joint. That should be leaving me stuck too, though. I ain't even gonna lie. That's hilarious. I can't. I can't. You. I can't. Okay. Let me just say this. Me personally, I can't function on weed. I can't function on weed or alcohol. If I do it, it's because I want to have a good time with with I'm in good company. But I'm I am not an effective businessman on that stuff. I am done. Mm-hmm. But if, for those that know how to function on that, yeah, keep doing it. Rock, <laughs> rock out, shit. <laughs> no judgment zone here. Knock his, fucking do a line of bump all I care. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You say snow the line while you're here. <laughs> Bam! It was like I was watching Tiger Toledo. <laughs> oh my god! Dude, that shit was lit, nigga. <laughs> Just like Club Fifty Four in the sixties. What up, man? promise you gonna make money dealing with me because this is all i got i don't have no trust funds i don't have none of that coming into me so i have to create everything that i do and so i can hide behind a camera and just keep teaching you know and and kind of dilly dallying and staying local but what what you know i was one of those things where i always focus kind of like on what could go wrong Okay, so this could go wrong, that could go wrong, but what about what goes right? Mm. We don't focus enough on what can go right. So when I step out of that box and I say, I'm going for it, I'm willing to go for it, and I'm willing to go down swinging. If that's what it means, I mean, for these three, four, five months, I had a hell of a ride, and I'm good after that. Because what I may not have done was what I wanted to do, but I guarantee I'll end up where I need to do. And that's what my failures teach me. So now I lean into it. I'm not afraid of a failure anymore. I used to be terrified of failure. Yeah. Wouldn't do anything I wasn't good at. So what did that make my life mediocre? Because I wasn't able to extend. I could only maintain. So now it's like, I got big dreams. You know, you start putting stuff on your dream board. And then this is what I do. I look at where I started. Like, yeah. oh, okay, so I got some progress coming here. And yeah. so you keep going. And so at the end of the day, like I say, I go back to my father. He passed away. I'm boss. Every situation that you become involved in, you're going to see how you can maximize that, how you can customize that and make it what you do. Um, so I get ideas from some amazing notaries out here. Um, <laughs> I do. I get all types of ideas. I get all types of information. I'm always seeking information. That will never stop. I just told the class that I had here in Florida, you know, I I will never say that I have arrived. I'm always chasing to arrive. I'm always trying to get more. So I feel like it came from just an innate desire to try to be the best in your sphere, in your environment. I know that whenever I get a loan signing and I send somebody out, I give them the lion's share. You know, Mm. I take the $75 as a finder's fee and I give them the rest because it just makes sense to me. They're doing all the work. I I literally just made a phone call. Hey, can you handle this? You know, so I just decided that, you know, there's always more than one way to operate. And um, with the help of Tyrone Fain and my mom, we just started putting things together, like adding paralegals, um, adding just a couple of, you know, notaries around. Tanika, that's why they say Coach T. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, but I live in Georgia. Um, I've been here for maybe about 13 years, but I've always been a notary. I just, at the beginning of the time when I was a notary, you know, Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you can do anything but be at your job and stamp some documents. So that's, that's kind of how I started until I started teaching myself and learning along the way, finding people doing different things. And it was like, oh, you can do more than Mm. just this. Right. Um, But of course, you know, you can't do it 
if your job is paying for it. So you have to do things on your own. Um, So, you know, it took me a while to kind of step out of that and be comfortable enough to get away from that, Mm -hmm. from that employee mentality and turn it into something that I can do on my own. But nevertheless, I'm here. Um, I'm excited to be here. I actually been a notary since 2009. Okay. It's been a long time. Um, but I didn't really step into this whole, you know, boss business thing until maybe 2019. Nice. Yep, so, yep. so what do you specialize in exactly? So I actually <coughs> specialize in mobile notary and notary signing agent work. Um, so I kind of, I do the transition. That there's a lot of money to be made on here. And we're trying to provide that service. We want to serve you to show you that, yeah, there's a there's an abundance of money out there. You heard what Tech said. The a, a client might call seven, eight people. When a person tells me that, I get pissed. You know why I get pissed, Tech? Why? Because it's like, damn, my my marketing ain't working good yeah. enough. You shouldn't <laughs> have to call that many damn people. Yeah. I should be the first, second, and third person you call. The hell. Right. And I get upset, right? That's right. I was like, how the hell am I the eighth person? Like, let me you know check what? my analytics and data again. <laughs> and that's exactly, you know what? And that's another, I have this great digital marketing strategist that works with me. And she is so sharp, man. She is brilliant. Charlene Bond of uh, prolificexpressions.com. Prolificexpressions.com, please. She, I'll put a referral thing on, on the chat if I, you know. I heard of that. her before. Man, she's on it. She was saying, if people are complaining about um, not a notary is not calling, then that's exactly what you give them, or not answering the phone, rather, then that's exactly what you do. If, if people are complaining about notaries being late 15 minutes, 30 minutes, because you know they're depending on you to get there on time so that they can go and handle their business, right? You can't be late. So advertise that, market that. Say, listen, I'm going to be on time every Indeed. time, and this is a guaranteed appointment. You will not get a a, somebody who, who's a no-show, right? So the things that people are complaining to you about, again, talk to these people, talk to strangers, get comfortable with talking to strangers because they'll tell you. It's, it's a completely different beast, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that allows you to reach people on a massive level, which is convincing them to want to, trust you, right? You're building okay. trust because you understand their situation, what they're going through. You can kind of relate to what they're, and you're offering them a solution. Is that my video? Yeah, man. I mean, I think that's a great uh, analogy and great illustration because if you, if they're, if someone's in that position and a lot of people are, yes, you know, you, you tell a story about, you can be, you can ask the question, but you could also say, hey, Thomas's mother just came out of the hospital and he, he got a nice picture of, of the situation. And the story's like, ooh, what's going on with that? Because I'm going through the same thing right now. And they're in the story, just like a movie trailer. Like, they're reading it and seeing themselves in it. And th- so there's no sales resistance. How could there be? You're not selling anything. You're just telling a story and it's the story that they're living. Yeah. You're reading their diary to them and saying, this is what's going on. Here and then Thomas figured it out though how to help his mother out. So she See, I'm not on that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're a you're a bad man, no question about I, it. I, I'm working on it, but that that Thomas story, you just had me like I was like, oh shit, what's going on with Thomas? And you just made it up. That's so that's how fucked up it is, man. Like, damn. But yeah, it, I okay, okay. So for a person that never never been exposed to copywriting. Like what are some three fundamentals that can just get their mind moving in the right direction? Like what could they start doing? Yeah, one of the things that you should start doing is looking closely at what Tiger Tolif was doing. (laughs) (laughs) This is real, really seriously. The way that any of us learn best, I mean, is, is by looking at what's working in the real world you can read books and that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. I read a lot of books, um, but books are just books. I want to see what's, what's making money right now. What's moving the masses right now. 
And so, but also, you know, follow Tiger. Notary Secrets, How to Make More Money Without Working More. During this free webinar, Tiger Toledo reveals how you can attract more clients with cutting-edge ways to market your notary business. You'll learn how to develop the right mindset, how to create passive income as a notary, and about how to start a notary agency. He will also show you how to how to build a profitable notary business on a shoestring budget. Plus, why it's tougher than ever before to reach prospects, and what you can do about it. The number one skill separating great notaries from their peers. Three reasons it's hard to learn how to become a successful notary public. And how you can use my SmartNet system to make way more money than you are today. Register today.